Welcome back to the Explore African series where we talk about everything Africa, culture, natural resources, heritage, history, food, and all kind of stuff African. Today we're going to be talking about Ethiopia and the kingdom of Haskum or they call it Asum or Aksum as well so we're going to be looking at some introduction some of the objectives that we'd like to achieve general history timeline conclusion okay yeah the kingdom of Askew was an ancient civilization that existed in the region of modern day ethiopia and eritrea now you can see why is there a green bit aha I was going to explain that to you. So, the kingdom of Askim extended beyond African continents. It actually went, you know... That's Yemen. Yes, now, modern day, you know, uh, Yemen. So, it went across there. Okay? But now, in today... Daddy, in that, uh, that green bit of Saudi Arabia, is that yes. Saudi Arabia? No, that's, that's bottom. Yemen. That's Yemen and the bottom. Yeah, the... Yemen. So now in the modern day, um, this is what Ethiopia um, looks like, right? And it is believed that the Queen of Sheba actually ruled the kingdom of Askum for over 50 years. Do we all know the Queen of Sheba? No. 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 Okay, maybe, you know, we're going to cover that. We can see the modern day um, Ethiopia is in the eastern part of Africa. So the Askum, the kingdom of Askum was a major naval and trading power from the 4th to 7th century AD. And why is that? Because this path here is actually a very busy trading route, right? For, you know, the Arabian um, kingdoms then and in Africa, and you know this leads you to the indian ocean so you know people from china from india you know use this route to come and trade in africa so the kingdom was one of the african empires to issue its own coins notably called the ashkamite currency what coins were that's the coins they used to use that kingdom the kingdom of Ashkim used to use in those days because they have different um, kings or emperors, right? And the emperors would create coins. In today's um, world, whereby when you see a note, a dollar bill, you see the head of maybe former pre president or in a former founders. When you see a coin in England, what do you see? The head of the queen. Now it's gonna be the head of King Charles. I said the head of the queen. As in the, yeah. the image, the King image, Child. the image. They King put the Child. image of the queen the on the on the yeah. on the coin King or on Child. the notes. The coins initially bore the name and image of King N. Dubis. Mm -hmm. Then later, the coin was also the first. So the kingdom was also one of the first African states to adopt Christianity after Emperor. Ezana declared it a Christian empire, right? Now, when King Ezana became king and emperor, he later replaced the coin, the symbol on the coins, with a cross, the importance of Christianity. The now, you can cross. see, see yeah, he put a cross on the, on the coin, right? And that's probably King Ezana. On the other side of that coin and that was to show that it's this that nation true. this nation is a christian nation christian so it's a christian coin well the king was a christian so and he believed that he needs to show that his kingdom is a christian nation so he was going to show everyone about <clears throat> uh, god yes so besides Christianity being the dominant religion at the time, several group of people called the Better Israel embraced Judaism 
due to their Jewish ancestry, they have been described as black Jews. Okay, so Ethiopia is one of the, if not the only, I'm not sure, but it's one of the known African countries that has um, Jewish ancestry. And we're gonna probably have a little bit of understanding about that later. So about two thirds of Ethiopia are Christians and the other one third are Muslims. So the ruins of Askim have been declared as world heritage site due to royal tombs, ancient castles, giant um, stylae, I hope that's how that's pronounced, or stylea, and Askim obelisk, which is um, a huge monument, like a tall monument. So the kingdom also had its own alphabet called Gears, but they also spoke Greek in those days. So that's that's what um, the Gears alphabet looks like um, in those days. And this is, you know, one of the um, Orthodox churches in are Ethiopia those, right um, now. That's what's going to be. So we're going to learn about Ethiopia and its history, explore its culture, religions. And people and look at the historical timeline of Ethiopia. The modern day Ethiopia is located in the Horn of Africa on the eastern part of Africa. It has a population of over 126 million people today and the capital is Addis Ababa. It is Africa's oldest independent nation and one of the oldest nations in the world. What does that mean to be the oldest independent nation? It means that most of African countries were colonized. Do you remember what colonization means? Yeah, we talked about that last time. For a, a, a superior power to take over another country and rule over them. So Ethiopia is one of the African countries that didn't have... The power to rule over the, yes, the West. They, they didn't have the Western power rule over them. They fought and they won. They fought so, and they won. Yeah. We'll see that in the timeline. Ethiopia became a country as we know it today in 1896. See how old they are? Yeah. After defeating Italian forces at the Battle of Edwa. It was one of the African nations never colonized by Western nations. Now, Ethiopia is home to more than 80 different ethnic groups, the largest of which is the Oromo making up about 35% of the population followed by the Amhara about 27% the Somali and the Tigray are the third and fourth largest ethnic groups Queen of Sheba and King Solomon apparently had a son called Menelik I several rulers in Ethiopia descended from him so now we can see how perhaps the Jewish heritage came from. Also being claimed that Askim is the home of the Ark of Covenant, mm. right? And what is the Ark of Covenant? Right, we talked about, we just, you know, looked at the story of Moses and the Exodus, right? And when God gave them, under Moses, God gave them the specification on how they, they will build the half of the covenant, how they will build the tabernacle, right? And what's in the half of the covenant? You have the tablets of law, the Ten Commandments. Remember, God created the Ten Commandments, God carved it out, wrote it in, um, in, 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 in stone, and God, you know, carved out the stone and gave it to Moses. Moses broke it, or Moses had to do another one by himself. And God gave him the instructions, told him the the Ten Commandments again, you have to you know carve out its own. So, this Ten Commandments is you know very, very separate to the Jewish people, and they kept it in the Ark of Covenant. And that Ark was you know lost at some point, but what is being claimed that this Ark is actually in one of the oldest um, 
churches or church in um, in Ethiopia this day, and they will never allow anybody to you know see it. But they made replica of, of the act, which they call the taboots, right? And these are housed in the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian churches, and they carry them in procession on special you know days. And you can see at the bottom here, this is what the act looks like. You know, having you know, two angels, um, and their um, their wings, you know, touching each other like that, right? So this was specifically God gave Moses this specific instruction on how to make this act of the covenant. Is that um, Moses? No, no. So now this is the um, people, the Ethiopian people. They carry what they call the, you know, taboots, right? And they use this. This is one of their traditions. They will carry this, right? And they will be, you know, a lot of them will be walking on the streets. They do that on special days, anyway, and it's a religious um, practice. So Ethiopia has about 60 volcanoes. I know me too likes volcanoes. In this rift valley, one which is still active, the Eta Ale. And has the longest lava lake in the world you can see it there right this is in ethiopia africa so ethiopia is also home to many endangered and rare animals and plants such as you know the simian jackal and inyala so this is the inyala so this this kind this um animals are endangered and the reason why they call them endangered is because their number is going down what yeah, as in there are not a lot of them around okay and they're almost gonna get you know extinct when die. well if you only have maybe like you know 200 or 1000 of these kind of animals left then you have to protect them because if all of them die then you never have any of them ever again okay and you're going to die so you want to protect them so endangered um, animals or species are protected so you these animals protect are protect them, them. yes have to take, them to our take care of them make sure people are not going to you know hunt them and kill them right and with you, guns. Have to, you have to take them where some somewhere where they're going to be safe but safe, why yeah. but why would people want to kill them people do that yeah you some see people, people go you know go to africa yes you know just just to kill them for fun oh yes you see people you know go to africa to go and you know kill animals just for fun some people will go and kill um they'll go and kill elephants just to get it's trunk it's trunk the tusk. yeah the tusk yeah. you know just because they want to hang it on their wall in their house right it's not good. that's not good is it? Like it ethiopia is rich in natural resources as well such as gold copper and natural gas which is one of the largest in africa so we see this, you know, recurring theme about, you know, Africa having, you know, lots of natural resources. The timeline here we see in the second century, the kingdom of Askin becomes trading power. Then in the fourth century, Christianity becomes state religion. And in the early 1500s, we have, you know, a Muslim leader called um, Hamid Gran conquers much of Ethiopia. And this is why, you know, about one third of Ethiopia is now Muslim. Um, population and in the 1895 Italy tried to colonize Ethiopia but failed in the Adwa battle and this is why Ethiopia was never colonized by any Western country and in between 1985 to 1991 almost all black Ethiopian Jews migrated to Israel then in 1993 remember I said that the Askum, the Kingdom of Askum, was a combination then of Ethiopia and Eritrea. Now, there was almost a thirty-year war, right, between you know Eritrea and Ethiopia before nineteen ninety-three. Eritrea finally got independent from Ethiopia, and it became an independent um, nation. Time. What is the capital city of Ethiopia? A. Aksum. B. Addis Ababa. C. Lalibela. And D. Gonda. Number two. 
What was the dominant religion in the Aksum Kingdom? A. Islam B. Christianity C. Judaism D. Buddhism Number three, which valuable commodities were traded by the Aksum Kingdom? A. Salt and sugar B. Spices and tea C. Gold and ivory D. Milk and porcelain Number four, what script was commonly used for writing in the Aksum Kingdom? A. Arabic B. Latin C. Greek D. Gays Which Aksumite archaeological site is recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Site? In conclusion, we see that Ethiopia has an impressive ancient, historic and spiritual heritage. And one of the spiritual heritage that they have, right, apart from the fact that it's been claimed that you know they, they actually have the Ark of Covenant, right, is this Lalibela cross, right? And this is one of um is is a separate site that they go to to go and worship you can see it's a huge cross that was built you know more or less on the ground and you can just see the surface on top so they regard this as um, a holy site for them then ethiopia is also very diverse culturally and both rich in human and natural resources then ethiopia has captivating natural wonders, the active lava flow, and the endangered animals that we talked about.